So I'm going to come back now. We've talked about our laser project, which we have renamed to the part, which is ABC123. And additionally, uh, you can see now we have another item here underneath, which is called the plane. Now, your plane does represent the actual area where you're going to lay out your graphics, text, whatever it is that you wish to mark on your part. You're going to lay those items out on the plane. And to get to that plane, we're simply going to go down here to the bottom and click on this tab that says plane. And now you can see we have this box that we that, uh, pops up here because we're on a different view. Also, the tabs have changed here as well. These tabs now pertain to this plane here on the screen. So this is now the active object. Okay, therefore, the tabs on the right contain all the data and parameters that apply to this object here. Now, simply put, this box on the screen represents the marking window below your laser. So if I were to grab this box with my hands and pull it off the screen and set it underneath my laser, it would represent the window that my laser can mark within. And this point here is 0, 0. So what we are seeing here is an X and a Y. Okay, and we have a four quadrant system, which we'll get into more detail in a moment. So since this is my 0, 0 point on my X and my Y, this point here actually falls directly below the center of your lens. So if you were to come straight down from the center of your lens to your bed plate, the center of your lens would essentially be this point here. That gives you a good visual representation of how this box correlates to your view inside your laser. Now, as I am looking straight on at this screen and seeing my x-axis this way and my y-axis this way, it is the same way inside of my laser system as well. If I open the door to my mini lays and I look straight in, from left to right is my X and front to back is my Y. So if I lay a text string out from left to right on here, the mini lays is going to mark it from left to right, viewing through the front of the system the same way. So very, very simple, easy to understand, and easy to lay out your objects and create them. Let's talk a little bit about the parameters for this that are contained over here. Um, first, we'll cover the general tab, Snap and Grid. We do have the ability to turn a grid on and off. If I turn this grid off, you're going to see my X and my Y disappear. Okay, and I'm going to turn that back on because I really have no visual cue. And that's a comfort thing. If you do not like to have that X and Y on there, it's completely not necessary. You can control the location of objects through X and Y coordinates assigned to those objects as well. So you don't necessarily have to physically line them up. You can line them up by the numbers. If you want something directly on center, you can strictly tell it to go to 0, 0 by typing it into that object's parameter, such as a text string. I'm going to turn the grid back on, though, because I do like seeing this. But that turns that grid uh, on and off here. And the reason that I'm only seeing the X and the Y are because the size of my grid is 55 millimeters. So I'm 55 millimeters this way and this way off of my zero point, which means I'm not seeing my outer portion of this box that's, that's drawn. And just to show you further what I mean, if I change this to 25, you can see it's now created 25 millimeter um, sized squares, so 25 millimeters tall. 25 millimeters wide. If I change this down to 5, you will see it will decrease the size of the squares to 5. And then I could turn on something like Snap to Grid, which if I create text strings within here, I can make those objects snap to this grid and those objects will line up. Um, so it could be an easy way if I wanted to create a text string every 5 millimeters. I could do that simply by copying that text string and snapping it every 5 millimeters to this cross point here on the grid. There are other ways, however, to create arrays of parts besides snapping it to the grid. So this is just a uh, tool that some may find useful, some may not. It's all up to the individual user. Turn that off. Go ahead and turn my grid back up here. Now you can see I simply have my X and my Y. Uh, now I want to talk just for one moment here about our four quadrants that I mentioned a few moments ago. 
because this is an X and a Y, we do have a positive X and this is a negative Y and we have a positive, excuse me, negative X, excuse me, positive X, positive Y, negative Y. So we do have a four quadrant system as I discussed with the, y, the X comes first. So we have positive X, positive Y, negative X, positive Y, negative X, negative Y, and we have positive X, negative Y here. So we have a four quadrant system and those are coordinates are basically all come off of this zero point. So we're going 50 millimeters up, 50 millimeters negative, 50 millimeters over, 50 millimeters negative over this way. Okay. Also have an origin point, which is by default is on center, which is here. We can change that if we want our origin point, our zero origin point to be in a corner. However, most users work off uh, zero zero, which is the default, which I recommend as well. Um, there are really no major advantages to working um, off of the corner unless you have very precise fixturing and you're going to be doing trays or pallets of parts over and over. You may want to reference those to a hard stop in a corner and then position your objects based off the starting point of your fixture in the corner. You can do that, but we'll leave that on center for today. Now, we look at the size of this marking window, we're going to come over to plain work and we're going to be able to see that here. There is an INI file that was installed with your software when you did the installation. And that INI file designates um, all the parameters of the laser uh, that is in, in the mini lays. So for the mini lays to be able to run properly and for the lens to be able to portray objects in the correct location and size, we have an INI file that is custom tailored to your system. And that INI file is available uh, on the USB stick, but it's hidden in the background and it, and it is installed by default, custom tailored to your system uh, when you install your computer. That INI file um, also tells you, or excuse me, tells your software what size lens you're using. And by default with the mini lays, you get a 160 millimeter small lens which gives you for the mini lays a 100 by 100 millimeter marking window. So you can see here that our print area is defined as 100 by 100 and that is taken from that INI file that says software I am allowing you to use 100 by 100 and we cannot go above that in what we call our work area but we can go below that. For example if I want to work in smaller boundaries such as 50 by 50 I can designate that very easily by changing these numbers. However, you will see if I try to go above that, it will show me that that's not available by indicating a gray area. It will say, yes, I'll let you make your work area that large. However, your lens cannot reach that area. So we'll stick with 100 by 100. And I also have margins, which is, we could call it a safety net. As you start to ride the line here, some objects you could worry on some systems that the object may not mark as well in the very extreme corner here as it would on center. Now for your mini lays this is not true and the reason is because we have designated this 100 by 100 to make sure that the mini lays can effectively mark across this entire window. We don't push the boundaries by default. We don't try to stretch it out any further than this because we know if we go further than 100 by 100, we start to get into trouble in these corner areas where the lens is here and your object is here. The distance for that lens to reach that object is much further than if the lens is marking an object directly below it. But um, the margins are available to turn on. So if you want to say, I, I want to leave my work area at 100 by 100, and move to five by five margin. Uh, so that's coming in five millimeters on both the uh, X and the Y uh, outside uh, dimensions, we can do that. Now, as I create an object on here and I move it to the edge, if I put that object outside this marking window, it will turn red in color. So if I create a text string by default on the screen, it will be black. I'll show you that in a moment. But if I move it outside this area, that will um, be uh, red. Now I will show you what happens to a text string here briefly. Uh, I will get ahead of myself a little bit and create a text string and we'll come back to this in a moment but you can see my text strings black. If I click and I drag it outside this available window it's going to turn red 
Therefore, the laser is going to say, I cannot reach this area with my lens, and therefore you need to pull me back inside, and now it is black again. If you create those margins, which we reviewed a moment ago, you would see that as soon as I got to where those margins were, the same thing would happen. My object would turn red. Now, I will delete that for the time being because we are going to come back to that in just a moment. So we covered plain work. The last and final tab is the laser tab. Now the laser tab is where we're going to designate laser settings. We're not going to get into laser settings too much right now. We will talk about that in a later tutorial, but I do want to review um, what is in this tab and what is going to be available to you as a user to make things easier in order to program different materials and different settings for those materials. Um, these laser settings here apply to this entire work area, meaning any object I create in here, whether it be text, graphics, or anything, are all going to follow whatever I set up as my laser parameters over here on the right side. And you can see here are my parameters, power, frequency, speed, passes, and we have some additional settings which we'll talk about in a later tutorial. And additionally, we have materials library on your system. When you install your software, there is a default materials library installed. So what you get essentially are settings for things like marking black on stainless steel, burning stainless steel or steel, um, doing plastics, uh, anodized aluminum, black oxide, different settings that you may use. Uh, that are very common, we give you settings pre-formatted. So all you simply have to do is choose from your material here, have the drop down, choose the material that you wish to mark, and it will pre-arrange all of these settings for you. It takes the guesswork out of it and makes things easier for you. And we'll go over that in detail a little bit later. We'll not get into that further. So that covers the general layout of creating a project and creating uh, or reviewing the way that we manipulate this plane, which is automatically created when we create a new project.